Hello friends, today we talk about the control charts for variables data in subgroups. Okay, so in this uh, lesson, we talk about the basic concepts of the control charts and we'll talk more detail about the R charts. So let's get started. In the last section, we looked at data from assembly lines at ABC, uh, a company that makes uh, 16 inch diameter car wheel rims uh, wheels using a casting process. Uh, we want to use country charts to assess the stability of the wheel manu pro, uh, manufacturing process. So does variation in wheel rim diameter change over time? Does the mean wheel rim diameter change over time? Is the wheel rim manufacturing process in control? When we monitor a process that is measured with variables data, it's important to collect our data in rational subgroups. A rational subgroup can be any size greater than or equal to 1 depending on the process. For processes with subgroups contain more than one sample, we use contrast for data in subgroups. We use R chart and S chart to monitor within subgroup variation, and we use S bar chart to monitor between subgroup variation. Okay, so let's review. We use R, S, and S bar chart to monitor processes that are measured using variables data. We will uh, we'll see charts that reflect both in uh, in control and out of control processes and learn how to use these charts to spot unusual sources of variation. Uh, when, um, uh, when we monitor a process that is measured with variable data, we try to collect our data in subgroups that are as free from assignable sources of variation as possible. For example, on the assembly line, at ABC company, we sample five parts each hour for 20 hours. A common error in process analysis is interpreting subgroup means without first ensuring that the variability within the subgroup is in statistical control. So how can we find out if the subgroup contain any unusual sources of variation over time? Here is our collected data. One of the contract charts we can use to look for assignable cost variation of the wheel rim diameters is our chart. This chart, uh, this chart uses the range to monitor changes in process variation over time. Recall that the range is a single statistic used to measure variation, it is simply the difference between the largest and smallest values in the sample. Okay, so the, okay, it's the difference between the largest and smallest data uh, values in the sample. Let's calculate the sample uh, range for each subgroup of 5 pass and plus this value on the R chart. Here's, here's subgroup 1. The range is 0 0.41. This is the first point on the R chart. So what is the range for the subgroups 2 and 3? Continue for uh, the 17 remaining subgroups, then, uh, then connect the points. Next, we draw the center line and the control limit. The mean of the 20 subgroup range, uh, ranges is 22.752. Uh, we call this value R bar and plot our center line here. The center line presents, uh, represents the mean of the subgroup ranges and is an estimate of the within sub, uh, subgroup variation. 
now we add the control image the upper and the lower control image show the amount of variation expected for the subgroup ranges for the part dimension data the upper control image is this for uh, multiply R bar and the result is 5.818 and the lower control image is B3 uh, multiply R bar and the final result is 0 okay so we can use the the R, the R chart to determine if process variation is in control within sampled subroutes Remember, a process is out of control if any points fall outside of the control image or if pattern is evident in the control chart. Uh, based on the R chart, so is within subroof variation in control. Okay, so we can see because no sample ranges are outside of the control image and no patterns exist. So the within subroof variation is in control. When a process is not in control, the R chart can have a spot unusual sources of variation. Uh, for example, look at this R chart for two out of control processes. So which of these charts is out of control because the subroof ranges get smaller over time? Okay, we see that uh, this chart that even though all points fall within the control image, this process is out of control because the ranges decrease over time. In this control chart, the subgroup ranges get smaller over time. Remember, range is a measure of variation. So a decrease in range implies a decrease in the variability within each uh, subgroup. This plot may actually signal an improvement in the process. So what about this R chart? This chart shows subgroup ranges increasing over time. A larger range suggests greater variation in the data. Our process is our control and we should investigate regions for this increasing variation. When subgroup size are small, generally 8 or less, the range is a good estimator of process variation. For large, larger subgroups, we should use different measure to estimate the variation that uses all of the data points not just two this measure called the standard deviation is used to make an edge chart which we learn next okay so let's review the r chart plus sample ranges for variation data in subgroups over time by doing so r chart evaluate whether variation within all of our subgroups is stable in general, R charts are appropriate when the subgroup size is 8 or less by looking for our control points and patterns in variation. We can use R charts to help us spot unwanted sources of variation in our process. Thank you for the listening. In the next lesson, we'll talk more detail about S charts.